Hey everyone, <clears throat> hope everyone is doing well. I haven't um, been with any videos for a while. I've been busy um, working and just handling some things, but it's about a little after midnight. And um, you gotta excuse how my face looks. I was trying to sleep, but um, just um, taking that time and hearing what's being put into my spirit, you know, what God is, is speaking to me. Um, you know, like, <clears throat> just like the enemy comes against your mind um, and, 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 and tries to attack you in certain areas, um, if you're attentive, then you always know that there is um, a word from God out there. Because um, God, you know, cares and loves about us so much, you know, that he promised to never leave us or forsake us in any situation. And this weekend, I found myself like, I don't want to say an emotional roller coaster, but dealing with a lot of things. I think a lot of suppressed feelings, um, you know, if you're a person that has to be strong in the midst of so many things going on around you because um, you know that you, you really can't afford to break um, when so much is depending on you and so much is leaning on you, especially like if you're a parent, if you're a mom, if you're a dad or whatever, you know, your, resilient, your resilience has to be thick, you know what I'm saying? Because you know if God bless you with children, no matter how old your children get, if you're a parent with God's heart towards your children, um, you're going to always do your best to be there for them. Now, if you're a, a person who didn't have people there for you or your parents or, you know, guidance for you when you was young, then it might be a little hard for you to be nurturing or to be the type of person to have em empathy. You might be selfish in that area because you didn't get it so you don't know how to give it you know if that makes any sense um you know i was blessed to get that love even if it wasn't from my parents like that um but i was blessed to get the nurturing you know what i'm saying i was blessed to get that nurturing because my grandparents were there for me so i'm a natural nurturer i'm one who um feels empathy when anybody is being treated wrong um i'm a person that god has allowed to be filled with grace because so much grace has been given to me. Um, when I look over my life and look at how, you know, my family consists of a family of nine and I know family of two, people people who are a family of two and three who are struggling, who don't can't don't know where their next meal is coming from, uh, don't know where they're gonna rest their head, um, just can't seem to give it get it together. And I look at God and I say, you know, for you to have blessed us because how I live and the way I live and what I have is nothing but the hand of God. It has nothing to do with me. Everything that I have, everything that my family has right now is orchestrated by God. It's not because of somebody's job. It's not because of my, based on my talent. No, because God is the absolute source of everything. So when I speak of grace and, and here is the issue when you're a person filled with grace, when you're a person filled with grace, you have to be one who has accepted wholeheartedly the love God has had for you and has for you. It's a matter of living from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Um, if that makes any sense to anybody, understand we're going to have trials in our life. We're going to have tough situations. We're going to have uncomfortable situations. But when we look back over our life from where we were to where we are now, we know that we are overcomers. And the, in, the, in the scripture, it says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Well, when we testify, we testify on things that we have experienced. Okay? We, 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 we overcome by the blood that Jesus shed for us, for us to be where we're at. Um. In order for you to be a person filled with grace, meaning not looking at what the next man has, not paying attention to what other people do, but looking at your life and saying, you know what, if it wasn't for God, at this very moment, if it wasn't for God, in my imperfections, with my flaws, 
where I might have messed up. If it wasn't for God, I would not be. And we live in a world of people who feel like they are self-made. We live in a world where people don't give God any glory for what they have because we're dealing with big egos. We're dealing with the spirit of pride that caused Satan to fall. And the Bible and the word of God says that pride cometh before the fall. And it says, um, I can't quote these scriptures, but you'll see that in so many words, God is saying that if you exalt yourself, you'll see where you are weak. Because what you'll catch in reality is a humbling experience. To understand that outside of God, his love, his mercy, and his grace, you are zero. You are nothing. Your testimony without the blood of God smeared on your life is zero. It's null. It's void. I don't care who you are at this point. If you don't accept God, if you don't accept the fact, and, and it's not about being a perfect person. See, the world based everything on works. And they've based everything on works to take works to take away the credibility of who God is. That is all that is that is why America, that's why this world is in a state that it's in. Because they want to do everything based on works, saying that if you don't do this, you don't deserve my love. If you don't do this, and if you don't live here, and you don't have this job, then you need to be looked down upon. Because I don't think that you're doing good enough. My only issue, here, here is my problem, here is, here is my issue. Because I know where God has brought me from to where he's brought me to, my issue is with unbelievers. So help me God. That's my issue. I struggle with being around people who are not, they don't have, they don't live with grace. They're angry and they're mad and they're, they make other people's lives hard because they choose. See, once you know God, once you experience him, once he's brought you through time after time again, and you choose to be angry because it's your decision, because God said, I have given you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. Your seed is your children. See, people don't want to accept the fact, okay, because when we look at the generations that's coming behind us, it is us. Okay, it is us who have to take the responsibility for what we do as adults, what we do as believers, how we treat our children, how we treat our spouses, husbands, how we treat our wives. You, listen, you're not going to be able to get over this, around this. No, because you're dealing with a God who is a creator of everything. When he stepped into the garden, he created Adam first. Yes. Then he took his rib and created the woman, Eve. Now, in the Bible, it says when a man finds a wife, he finds a, he, he finds a good thing. Here's the notion. Here's what you need to hear. God has his best interest in mind for every single one of us. He knows what you went through. He knows what you're going through. And he knows what you need. So if God blesses you with a wife, right? Because we're going to talk about order. See, everybody wants to go around order. You can't go around order. You can't bypass order. Here's the order. God, the husband, the wife, and then the children. Man, if you're not going to God, if you're going to the music, if you're going to the rap music, if you're going to pornography, if you're going to the websites that have nothing to do with where the Holy Spirit is taking you, you are out of order. The marriages are struggling. Families are struggling because the man is confused. He's trying to guide his own steps, then guide his family and expect respect from his family when he's operating in the world. That is not what God has called us to. There is an order. 
There is an order. And as much as we want to say, because I'm a man, because I'm this, and because I'm that, you need to submit, and you need to do this, and I need... Listen, honey, what we all have to understand, okay? What we all have to understand. Let's 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 bring the scenarios because we we wrestling with the enemy. We wrestling with the author of confusion, that is the devil. You cannot view what God has created in the world sense and think that you're going to get a revelation or discernment from the Holy Spirit on how to work this thing when you're not seeking him. Okay? Here's the thing. God is not a man that he should lie. He has created us with a responsibility on earth to look for him. Christ is coming back for his bride. The reason why marriage is being attacked and family is being attacked because the family is a replica of that. The marriage, the wedding feast at the end times. There's so much, it, it goes so deep. It goes so deep. And I believe I'm going to come back with more. But let me just say this. We are being tried in the fire. Because there's something here that is important and is special to God. And God is not going to allow, okay, the world to break what he has orchestrated he has given us a responsibility to our children not to break them if you're somebody who's been broken and you know what it feels like to be broken and you don't go to God for help you're gonna be toxic you're gonna be uh, 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 damaging to everybody you come across because you ain't dealt with that what's in there you can't have, you know, you got a whole bunch of men, right? Even women, but you got a whole bunch of men that are so broken, okay? Their spirits are broken, they're insecure, uh, 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 um, they, they have um, a f inferiority complex. You don't, you can't, listen, that spirit is evident. It is a spirit that you carry on you. Just like when somebody is demonically influenced and it changes their features, okay? You carry that spirit on you. And so, I know what it is. Every day, I know the hurts and pains that I deal with because I have to look at myself in the mirror and I have to constantly deal with the things that have been done to me because I've been hurt the most by the people closest to me. And what do I do? I go to God. I spend time with God. Because listen, that time that you invest with God, instead of us, you know, idle time. And you take your idle time and you choose to look at the things of the world. And you wonder why you empty when you going through things. And you don't have nothing to pull from your spirit. So you weak. And outside of that, it's everybody else's fault. It's your fault. It's my fault. If I'm going through something and I choose to watch uh, 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 movies that's not going to build me up, uh, go and read things or or go uh, look on some porn or, or something like that to, to please my flesh, but my spirit is broken, what am I doing? What am I doing? God has not allowed us to go through this thing. To break us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Listen, I understand, okay? From a little girl, God has marked me to be who I am this day. And I can't fight it. As much as I've went there and I've went to the club and I went drinking and I went hanging out and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And that's not me. That's not who I am. 
And I'm okay with that because the, 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 the mantle, whatever God has placed on my life for me to do for him, I'm okay with the fact that nobody else might not be comfortable with it. I'm okay with the fact that the enemy is going to attack me because of it. I'm okay with that because all that matters is I hear from him, well done, my good and faithful servant. The gifts are without repentance. All we can do is strive to be who God called us to be. This life is not our own. I don't care how you dress it up. I don't care how you walk around and how you dress with your new clothes and drive around in your new car and live in your big house. That don't have nothing to do because when God strips you of all of that, who are you? When he strips you of your degrees, when he strips you of your bank account, when he strips you of your house, when he strips you of your job, who are you? And I had to ask God that. I had to say, what am I here for? What am I here for? You're not going to find that in the shade room. You're not going to find that on Instagram. You're not going to find that on Facebook. You're not going to find that on Snapchat. You're not going to find that on Periscope. You find out who you are when you spend time with God and he reveals to you what he needs you to do. And understand, it's not going to be something that you so very well choose. But do understand. That when God has his hand on your life, he will anoint that thing. And as you move in it, you get, you say, oh, shoot, I didn't know this was for me. But you're going to, the most miserable person, I guarantee you, a person that's miserable is bucking with God. They're bucking with him. They're fighting him because they know they got a call on their life, but they fighting him. They fighting him. No, because I wanted to do this. I wanted to be this. I wanted to go this way. And God is saying, no, I need you to go this way. This way is going to, you're not going to last long. It's destruction over here. And you and God is saying, I need you this way. And you're going to try to go this way. And he said, no, I love you too much. I need you on this route. And you trying to go this way. And he said, no, my love for you, my son. I love you, my daughter. I love you. I need you to stay on this road. This is what I have for you. It might not be comfortable, but listen. When God takes you out your comfort zone, see, because usually what's comfortable to your flesh is not good for your spirit. You're miserable when you're thinking about yourself. See, what happens is if you take your mind off of you for one minute, take your mind off of you, take your mind off your problems, take your mind off of what you want, take your mind off of who you thought you should be. And realize that if God gave you life this day, there's a purpose and there's a plan for your life. There's a plan for my life. And I get emotional because you know what? I am experiencing God's love for real. God's love. Nobody else's love has taken me to the place where I am. Right now, because I know unconditional love through my father, who we can't see, who we cannot see, that's faith. Faith is not based, faith is not based.